Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Pertahan Haji Hadid Ahmad Profesor Ulum Negara Yang berusaha Encik Muhammad Fairus Asilam Pengarah Penitian Negara Yang berusaha Yang dihormati Dave Dave Kohormat Profesor-Profesor Datuk-Datuk Datuk-Datuk Rakan-Rakan Media Tuan-Tuan dan Perempuan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera Salam satu Malaysia Dan selamat datang Ke Majlis Angkasa Top Anjuran bersama Agensi Angkasa Negara Akademi Sains Malaysia Dan Institut Fizik Malaysia Bersempena dengan sambutan Minggu Angkasa Sedunia 2015 Dan sambutan Tahun Cahaya Antara Antarabangsa 2015 Di Planet Negara pada hari ini Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, Minggu Angkasa Sebenarnya merupakan inisiatif oleh pertumbuhan bangsa-bangsa bersatu yang menggalakkan setiap negara di dunia meraihkan Minggu Angkasa Sebenarnya pada tarikh 4 hingga 10 Oktober setiap tahun. Sambutan Minggu Angkasa Sebenarnya pada tahun ini mengambil tema Discovery atau Penemuan. Tema tersebut telah dipilih dengan tujuan untuk menggalakkan orang ramai berbincang mengenai topik penemuan saintifik Terutamanya di dalam bidang angkasa Dan ini secara tidak langsung Akan meningkatkan lagi tahap kesedaran orang awam Terhadap bidang angkasa di seluruh dunia Pertubuhan bangsa-bangsa bersatu juga Telah mengisytiharkan tahun 2015 Sebagai Tahun Cahaya Antarabangsa Atau International Year of Life 2015 Dengan ringkasan IYL 2015 Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan kita merasa bertuah pada hari ini kerana dapat bersama-sama dengan seorang tokoh ilmuwan dalam bidang photonics atau sains cahaya. Beliau akan membincangkan topik ini di dalam konteks teknologi cahaya di peringkat global dan merentas zaman. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, sebelum melangkah lebih jauh, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput Encik Muhammad Fairuz Asilam, pengarah Perniagaan Negara untuk menyampaikan ucapan aluan dengan segala hormat Terima kasih Saudara Zamri Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera dan salam satu Malaysia Yang disanjungi Profesor Ulung Negara Profesor Datuk Dr. Haris bin Ahmad Dari Universiti Melaya yang berusaha Profesor Dr. Kuru Naden Ratnavelu, Presiden Institut Fizik of Malaysia Ketua-ketua Jabatan CEO Mosti Agensi Kerajaan IPTA dan IPTS Wakil-wakil industri, rakan-rakan media, para pensyarah, penyelidik, pelajar pasca siswa Zah Para pelajar semua, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang saya hormati sekalian Selamat datang ke Planetarium Negara untuk program Angkasa Top 2015 dengan tajuk kita pada petang ini ialah 2015 is the year of light yang akan disampaikan oleh Profesor Ulung Negara Profesor Datuk Dr. Haris Ahmad. Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, apakah International Year of Light? Pada 20 Disember 2013 di sesi perbahasan yang ke-68 di Persidangan Pertubuhan Bangsa-bangsa Bersatu telah mengistiharkan tahun 2015 sebagai Tahun Cahaya Antarabangsa ataupun International Year of Light IYL yang disambut dan diraihkan di seluruh dunia. Secara umumnya, International Year of Light ini ialah untuk memberitahu masyarakat bagaimana teknologi berasaskan cahaya dapat membantu dalam pembangunan mampan dan juga bagaimana teknologi cahaya dapat membantu menyelesaikan masalah global daripada segi culture, daripada segi politik, ekonomi dan sebagainya dan 
daripada sejarahnya teknologi cahaya ini telah bermula seawal tahun 1005 oleh ahli fizik daripada Arab pada waktu itu Ibn Haytham dan ia diikuti 100 tahun kemudian iaitu pada tahun 1905 oleh Albert Einstein dengan teori beliau yang terkenal iaitu teori relativiti dan semenjak daripada itu telah banyak pakar-pakar dalam teknologi cahaya laser, fotonik termasuk Charles Kau yang mana pada tahun 1965 telah berjaya uh, mencipta satu teknologi optik yang kita guna uh, yang boleh menyalurkan maklumat yang kita guna sebagai internet yang ia telah memudahkan dan menjadikan dunia kita begitu kecil dengan menggunakan te teknologi tersebut dan mengapa IYL ini penting kalau tuan-tuan datang ke sini ke Pentium Negara secara umumnya kami ini tentang astronomi dan tentang astronomi ini hubungan antara cahaya dan astronomi sangat luas cahaya datang dari seluruh pelusuk alam semesta yang kami panggil kosmos kosmos light jadi berbeza ahli astronomi ini dengan ahli fizik yang lain ahli biologi ialah mereka ada makmal yang mereka boleh pegang bahan eksperimen mereka tetapi bagi ahli astronomi cahaya itu adalah medium perantaraan cahaya itulah dengan menggunakan teknik spektroskopi umpamanya mereka boleh mengetahui berapa jauh bintang tersebut apakah komponen dan ciri-ciri yang ada di dalam bintang tersebut jadi dengan menggunakan cahaya itulah medium untuk ahli astronomi dan selain daripada itu pada tahun 1610 Galileo Galilei telah mencipta revolusi saintifik iaitu melalui pencerapan matahari dan objek angkasa yang mana terciptanya secara rasmi teleskop optik jadi teknologi cahaya ini ialah satu perkara yang penting dan ia merentas semua bidang ilmu dan juga bagi kami di Observatory Negara Langkawi kami sangat mengharapkan pakar-pakar tempatan untuk bersama-sama dengan kami untuk menggunakan balai cerap di Langkawi dengan alat-alat ataupun instrumen daripada uh, uh, pihak tempatan dan tahun ini juga kita bertuah kerana pada hari ini ialah hari terakhir sambutan World Space Week yang mana temanya ialah Discovery mengapa tema tersebut dipilih ialah kerana tahun ini untuk meraihkan penemuan-penemuan terpenting abad ini dalam bidang angkasa lepas termasuk yang terkini penemuan liquid ataupun uh, cecair uh, fluid uh, di planet Marih yang mana juga dengan menggunakan teknik imaging tanpa kita sentuh, tanpa kita pegang tetapi dengan menggunakan teknik pengimajan yang juga menggunakan cahaya sebagai bahan pantulan utama kita dapat mengenal pasti apa yang ada di permukaan planet Marih jadi itu adalah sangat mustahak bagi pihak agensi angkasa negara kami sekali lagi mengucapkan terima kasih kepada Profesor Dr. Haris yang sudi menerima undangan bersama daripada agensi angkasa negara Akademi Sains Malaysia dan Institut Fizik Malaysia dengan jadual waktu kerja beliau yang saya yakin amat padat beliau dinobatkan sebagai penerima tunggal anugerah Profesor Ulung Negara pada tahun 2014 dan sebagai komuniti sains sebagai komuniti ahli fizik kami rasa sangat berbangga dengan pencapaian tersebut setakat ini hanya empat orang di Malaysia yang mendapat Profesor Ulung dan ini kali yang pertama dalam bidang fizik fotonik Tahniah Prof dan berdirinya beliau di sini sebentar lagi kita semua berharap pengalaman-pengalaman beliau dapat dikongsikan dengan kita dan soalan-soalan daripada tuan-tuan dan perempuan sangat penting supaya sesi ini lebih live ataupun uh, lebih bermakna kita akan mendengar dan kita mengharap untuk mendengar pandangan Profesor Bagaimana beliau sebagai orang yang terawal di bidang ini pada tahun 1980-an tak silap saya membangunkan teknologi dan membangunkan bidang fotonik ini yang saya yakin pada waktu itu mungkin infranya tiada infrastruktur daripada segi framework bagaimana untuk membangunkan teknologi fotonik pun tidak ada jadi bagaimana beliau membangunkan itu dan yang pentingnya apakah vision beliau seterusnya jadi kita nak dengar itu daripada prof dan kita harap input-input tersebut dapat membantu kita sama-sama untuk menjayakan dan teknologi untuk negara dan juga kita juga berharap pihak private, pihak swasta, pihak industri dapat bersama-sama 
dengan kami sebab tanpa pihak swasta dan industri mustahil kerajaan dapat melabur sepenuhnya tidak ada dalam mana-mana sistem kerajaan sesuatu bidang itu dibangunkan tanpa sokongan daripada pihak swasta jadi mungkin juga Profesor Datuk juga dapat berkongsi prinsip kerja sebab, sebab sebagai seorang ahli fizik ini prinsip kerja beliau itulah yang unik berbanding dengan kita sebenarnya kita nak dengar bagaimana asas prinsip kerja dia mana yang boleh membantu kita dalam uh, uh, kita melaksanakan kerja dan sebagai peribadi juga saya berbangga sebagai orang alusta yang sama juga dengan Prof dan Dr Haris berbangga dengan pencapaian tersebut dan saya juga ialah pelajar tahun akhir yang mengambil projek uh, uh, optik pada waktu itu pada tahun 1998 jadi uh, kebanggaan itu saya kongsi di sini uh, untuk bersama-sama semua dan sebagai agensi angkasa negara yang di bawah Kementerian Sains, Teknologi dan Inovasi, kami diberi tanggungjawab untuk membangunkan R&D. Jadi untuk membangunkan research and development ini, bagaimanakah kitarannya? Adakah kita boleh bahagikan sains itu kepada sains asas, sains aplikasi, sains teknologi, komersial dan sebagainya? Atau adakah ia ialah satu kitaran lengkap yang sepatutnya dibangunkan bersama-sama dan akhirnya akan menghasilkan commercialization dan sebagainya? Jadi input-input itu penting kepada tuan-tuan dan perempuan yang bertugas sebagai pegawai-pegawai kanan kerajaan sebab yang bertugas sebagai pengawal-pengawal dana R&D untuk memahami kitaran sains dan teknologi ini. Dan kami juga berharap uh, Profesor Datuk dapat juga memberi nasihat dan juga menjadi pakar rujuk. Dan kita juga berharap agensi-agensi kerajaan yang berada di sini supaya menggunakan kepakaran yang mana yang sedia ada untuk merujuk dalam hal-hal yang berkaitan terutamanya dalam pembangunan Uh, science, Technology, Mathematics dan STEM lah Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics Akhir sekali, Angkasa, MOSTI, Akademi Sains Malaysia dan IFM merasa bangga dengan pencapaian dan punya harapan yang tinggi kepada Datuk Akademi Sains Malaysia dan Institut Fizik Malaysia berkongsi objektif yang sama dalam hal penganjuran ini iaitu untuk mempromosi sains dan teknologi dan kita juga hendak menunjukkan bagaimana sains dan teknologi itu sebenarnya digunakan secara harian dalam kehidupan kita. Jadi itu yang kami nak mungkin kita dah selalu menggunakan sains dan teknologi tapi kita tidak perasan. Tetapi hari ini kita akan tunjukkan dan kongsikan serba sedikit bagaimana sains dan teknologi yang kita gunakan membantu untuk kita datang daripada rumah kita ke penentera negara umpamanya dengan menggunakan teknologi angkasa. Program IYL secara keseluruhannya atau Angkasa Talk ini secara spesifik ia merupakan wadah untuk menunjukkan kepentingan dan peluang potensi teknologi cahaya untuk menyelesaikan masalah dan cabaran kita di bumi. Kepada para pembuat dasar dan pegawai-pegawai kanan kerajaan, kami berharap supaya siri Talk ini dapat memberi peluang untuk tuan-tuan dan puan-puan menghayati sepenuhnya kepentingan R&D, full cycle of R&D dan juga kepentingan basic science. Dan untuk berjaya juga kami berharap kerajaan dan para industri sanggup melabur Investment for the future, itulah sains Dia tidak boleh mendapat nilai secara cepat ataupun dalam masa yang pendek Kepada para penyelidik dan pensyarah ini adalah platform untuk kita memperkukuhkan networking yang sedia ada Termasuk dengan uh, pihak industri dan sebagainya Dan inilah juga platform untuk kita melahirkan talent ataupun human capital development yang baru supaya kita mempunyai bakat yang berkelas dunia yang itulah yang akan menjadi penarik kepada pelabur-pelabur antarabangsa untuk masuk ke Malaysia jikalau kita ada bakat yang setanding dan memenuhi keperluan mereka dan untuk rakan-rakan media di sini tuan-tuan dan perempuan harapan kami untuk menyebar luaskan tentang kepentingan sains angkasa ini dalam bahasa yang rakyat mudah faham dan penetrium negara sudi untuk menjadi perantara antara bidang sains dan juga untuk disampaikan kepada rakyat dan kita semua sebagai masyarakat umum kami berharap tuan-tuan dan perempuan lah yang akan menjadi penyokong kepada program sains program sains negara dan seterusnya saya mengucapkan selamat menghayati dan memanfaatkan uh, program ini sekian terima kasih kembali kita tanya kepada saya untuk cara cara ucapan aluan sebentar tadi untuk makluman para hadirin juga bersama-sama kita sebenarnya Profesor Dr. Kurunadan Ratna Bedu Pengurusi Institut Fizik Malaysia Seterusnya, sebelum kita mengikuti ceramah pada hari ini 
Kita saksikan dahulu tayangan video tema IYL 2019 dengan segala hormatnya. Everywhere in the world, our days begin with light. Light, you see, is everywhere. Light is life. Light connects us with others, near and far. It entertains and inspires both young and old. Light enables us to see things never imagined. It will drive economies of the future. With light, we can diagnose and treat disease. It helps protect and secure our communities. Light will be key in discovering solutions to society's most pressing problems. And as the lights go down around the world and our days end, Our future will continue to be enabled by light. Come back to your house, you switch on the switch of your light, you get light. You switch on the TV, the LCD is all about light. 
You have your handphone, you serve the net and take picture of your food sent to your boyfriend. It's all about life. Huh? You go back to bed, you have a clock next to your bed, into your, next to your bed, it's all about life. So everything at home, if you really look back, left and right, up and down, it's all about life. Life is one of the most important development of humankind. Not saying that other areas are not important, but light really composed our life. Through internet, through optical fiber, that makes our smartphone really smart. You know you have a smartphone that is not that smart. Because another smartphone is smart because of optical fiber and light. That make you contactable. You can talk to your friend, you can video call your friend, your husband and wife. When you travel, sometimes when I travel for instance in Hajj, in last 20 years, I cannot contact my family. But now it's Hajj, I, I just came back last week, and uh, I can communicate with the family using WhatsApp. You can use uh, Hangout. So fantastic through light. We should be very grateful that it's things like light in our life because it changed our lifestyle. Maybe I will run through the, my slide uh, I am free, you, I mean, uh, we are, this talk should be very flexible, should be very informal. You are free to ask questions if you like to. You can always interrupt me in between. I am more than happy to answer the question. And next to me is uh, Muni, one of my students. should be finishing his PhD in a couple of months' time. So this will help him to finish his PhD. <laughs> Alright? Okay, Okay, uh, the International Year of Light and Light-Based Technology is, it was resolved in the General Assembly on the 20th December of 2013. Now, it's a very important thing, it's a very important milestone in our life. It's a global initiative which will highlight, highlight the uh, uh, citizens of the importance of light and optical technology in their lives. It's a unique opportunity to inspire, educate, and connect on a global scale. Thanks. So light as a whole is a very important industry. If you read through the slide, it's a bit wordy, but I have to put them in the proper words so that we understand the content of the talk. Because you find that light is a very important area of science currently. It provides the framework for, glo for global market, education, and also the science and technology of light that can translate into product. You'll find that many of these products in the current years now, in the year to come, in the next 20 years, will be entirely based on light. Thanks. Now, light is an electromagnetic radiation of any wavelength, whether visible or not. It, can, it comprises even your uh, light that you have in ultraviolet, infrared, and so on. Everything in within the electromagnetic spectrum to find that you can consider them as light. The study of light, known as optic, is an important research area in modern physics. What is light actually? Modern theory explains the emission of light by matter in terms of electronic energy levels. An electron of higher state, when it decays to a lower state, it tends to em emit a photon. And that photon given to you by a form of energy in and that photon is the, the most basic form of your light. Now, if you look at the energy conversion application of light, light can be converted in so many forms. If you look, light provides a very important source of life through photosynthesis. Without plant, we will not be here. Light is a very important source of energy for plant. You have plant that provide us food, and then you have chemical energy, you have source of thermal energy, you have uh, solar cell, light hits onto a solar cell, it provides you energy in terms of electricity, and then you also have electrical energy through solar cell. Next. Now, energy conversion cycle, if you look from this slide, it, it provides light from the sun, is the prime source of energy on Earth. Without it, life will not exist on Earth. We will not be here without light. Light is the most important creation of God. God created light. I think it's the most important thing. Next. Now, light in early, early civilization 
forgive me to bring up this statement although some of us may not be may not be muslim here and all may early civilization held light in high regards the verse of light the uh, the uh, 35 verse of the 24th surah of the holy quran surah arno arno is one of the 99 names of allah which means the light let there be light is the third verse of the book of, of uh, Genesis in Holy Bible. In Hinduism, Diwali, Diwali, the festival of light, is a celebration of the victory of light over darkness. You see how light is so important in our early civilization. During our early days, the early presence of human being, light has played a very important role to sustain life. And now light will make our life better. And if you look, saying and messenger of God are often uh, limited with a, a halo in the form of circular glow. Halo is a ring of light that surrounds a person. For, for instance, you can see Christ, you have a light sparkle behind him. And the second picture, you have some uh, Guru Nana, a sing. A sing is like, uh, although I have some debate with my sing friend, it looks as though they come part from Islam, but some are not green. But you see there's a glow of light, and it's also Buddha. You see a glow of light behind him. So light is a form of some source of energy that leads to the power of God. Okay? What, what is this that happens when we see? Now, this is our eye. I think most of us understand how our eye works. And if you look at our eye, you find that the, the most important part is the back part, the back part of the eye. That is a photo diopterie. It's a photo detector. It's just a sensor that you can detect light and the light goes to the photo detectors at the back of your eye and that convert into electrical signal that goes to your brain to be your process. So the eye works on a simple principle. You have a lens system that collects light and the light is being transmitted into your photo sensor and then converted into electrical signal and the electrical signal into neurons it goes to your brain and your brain will process all the signal eventually if you see a picture of your husband you find that your husband picture goes back to your brain you, then it has a pattern comparison that you know your husband if you look at people who suffer from a dementia or a disease like you know Alzheimer you find that there is a husband picture behind in the storage bag but then you have a picture that they capture for that moment of time but they find that the brain not able to make the comparison so they do not recognize the husband so this is a problem you find that there is some that there is a faulty connection in your brain system so the brain and the eye works together very well <coughs> now to appreciate this better let's go on a journey back in time with life now the most important thing i think from the scientific uh, community uh, one of the theory that we put forward on the the birth of the of the universe is a Big Bang theory. The Big Bang theory of cosmic origin, which which uh, posits that from the very earliest of the moment through to the first three hundred eighty thousand years, the uh, the universe was a rolling roof of radiation. So it starts from there. Light electromagnetic radiation bath all space with one blinding blinding. Blinding, blinding elemental glow, and the cool red, the cool remnants of this elemental glow is still visible to us today. Nearly 13.5 billion years on from the beginning, as the cosmic microwave background radiates. And this is the fundamentals of Big Bang theory that show how the universe begins. In the Bible, they did discuss on the six days of the world. And this slide provides you some idea of the of the of the universe uh, began about 14 billion years ago in a violent explosion. Every particle started rushing apart from every other particle in an early super dense phase. And that, the next slide gives you some idea of the fundamental forces of nature that split from one another, triggering an extraordinary. Uh, uh, inflation period after only about 10.32 seconds the universe has spent by 30 orders of magnitude this is how the world begins everything starts from light next now in the early days fire flame and torch 
it, it, it is there 400,000 years before Christ. Men are probably discovered fire by accident. The flaming torch and the campfire are probably constituted early man first use of artificial lighting. If you look, the torch in the early days is just a bush of plant, plant remains tied up and then they create a flame and that is the early source of your light source. The torch was the first possible lamp. If you look at this figure, the torch that we have seen, what we have in this slide, show you the first possible lamp. A bundle of sticks tied together, make a blazing torch, uh, uh, producing a brighter and longer lasting light. And this is a very important part of humankind, how they begin to generate light. Next. And in the ancient art, 28,000 before Christ, you find that somewhere in Iraq, right? Uh, ice, uh, ice age snow and, and coal of, of 30,000 years ago. You find that it's writing on the cave of light. Drawing of animal figures in the life sign uh, replica of Chauvet cave in southern France. That shows that light was there as, as in those periods of time. Next. And then the first source of a primitive lamp. Lamp comes in after the torch. It happened about 13,000 before Christ. Prehistoric men used, pre, uh, used uh, primitive lamps to illuminate his cave. This lamp made from naturally from occurring materials such as rock, shell, horns, and stone were filled with grease and had a fiber wick. If you look, this is the early part of lamp, a Sumerian uh, alabaster lamp in Iraq, if not mistaken. Eh? All right. And then it moved to animal lamps. Uh, animals were used also as a lamp. Oily birds <coughs> and fish needed only be traded with a wig to produce a working lamp. Fireflies were used in the early days as a source of light. Fireflies were used to provide men with a source of convenient light. If you look in the insert, you find a firefly in the, in the uh, jar. They can illuminate a room actually. Can, if you collect enough firefly, put them in a jar, they can illuminate the room actually. So in the West Indian island and also in Japan, firefly were imprisoned in uh, primitive cages to provide illumination to the process of bioluminescence. This is the early days how they use bio source of light. Right? Early land fuels about 5000 before Christ. The fuel used in ancient land depended largely on whether it is available or not. Olive oil was probably the principal fuel employed in the Mediterranean countries and was, was exported to areas where the olive did not grow. So olive oil was a source of a uh, source of uh, oil that has been used to give you lamps and other oil which were possible like uh, from the east, nut oil, fish oil and so on lamp fuel were in those days is edible just like now we have palm oil, we can use source of oil to light our lamp but we don't do that today so lamp were more likely to be used by the wealthy than the poor people so poor people live in darkness in those early days right? Early lighting. This is the uh, this element light uh, lamp. We have a genie that comes out from here. In the ancient, in the ancient civilization of the Babylonian and Egypt, <coughs> light was a luxury. The element light were were far from the brilliant of today. They had a very nice looking lamp. Those was the early days lamp that been used in the you know, Arabian country. Eh? Oil pottery lamp about 600 before Christ. Pottery lamps were a cheap and practical means of illumination, easy to produce, easy to use, but rather messy to handle. The oil would often nose uh, ooze from the wick hole and run down the run down the outside of the lamp. So it's quite a messy lamp in the early days. The pottery lamp, eh? and then. One of the most important contributors in the early days in the area of light is Pythagoras. I think we have done Pythagoras theorem in school. We have studied maths in school. In fact, uh, Pythagoras do a lot of study in light. Uh, Pythagoras put form the particle theory of light. This assumed that every visible object emits a steady stream of particle that bombarded the eye 
and particular suggested that light consists of rays that emitting light feelers travel in straight line from the eye to the object and the session and the sens sensation of sight is obtained when this rays touch the object much like the sense of thought. This is the early theory of Pythagoras. <coughs> they say that light travel from the eye. And uh, Plato, before, uh, before Christ, 427, the Platonic school of uh, complicated the theory of light by, super, by, uh, by making an assumption that vision was produced by rays of light that originate in the eye and then strike the object before view. This is the early days of how people perceive vision. People say that the ray of light comes from the eye and that's how you see object. Next. And Aristotle, around that period of time, has a different theory of light from a particular school. He concluded that light travels in something like wave. So early part in our uh, philosopher, like Pythagoras and Plato, uh, Pythagoras made assumption is a particle, and along the way, people like Aristotle said it's a wave, not a particle. So there are two different approaches of light. One says it's a particle, the other says it's a wave. Until, until today, the debate still goes on. Next. Euclid, Euclid, he described the meaning of light and in his book of, 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 on optics, he anticipated the important ray theory. The first postulate stated the rays, the rays, the rays emit by the eye travel in a straight line, then, get, then gather all the geometry of, of his time into a single logical system in his book, Element, that say that light still travel from the eye. Next. Then you find that early days we still have the assumption that light travel from the eye. The invention of the candle is a very important discovery. The invention of the candle dates back to about 400 AD, perhaps somewhere somewhat earlier. And few candles were used in the home until about the 14th century. We have candles in the house until 14th century. <coughs> And then the important discovery of light was put forward by a Muslim scientist, the writing of Al Hazm, has been mentioned by ancient Faros Hatam. The most important work in optics in the uh, medieval age was performed by Abu Ali Al Hasan ibn Al Hasan ibn Al Hatam, 965 to 1039. <coughs> Better known to the European scholar to the Latin name of Al Hazm. Al Hazm studied copies of the early works from the Greek, like uh, uh, Plato's, uh, Aristotle's, and so on, the text, and more importantly, performed independent experiments. Indeed, Al Hazm dissected and studied animal eye in, in order to see how they were constructed and to learn how they might function. Light, according to Al Hazm, was a purely external phenomena that illuminated the object around us, and then and it is the light reflected from the surface of this object that interacts with the eye to produce image of the of the scene. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Early part, light travel from the eye during his period. During his period. He made a very important discovery, a very important assumption that the object reflects light and that's how the light gets into the eye. So now object transmits light to the eye. The video.
Welcome to the dark age, or as it should be known, the golden age. how important is life. From the short uh, video, you find that the contribution by Al Hatam is fantastic. Although we not, may not have the time to cover all his work, and you must understand to appreciate life, you have to understand the history of life. In the early days, about 380,000 before Christ, we find that how life, how people interact with life, how much they understand about life. And then you find as the time moves on, people make assumption that life your eye emits rays of light and seen of tech. But after the time of Al Hazan, you find that the idea has changed. Light does, does not come from the eye, but it comes from the object as what we have now. And light is fantastic. I think without light, without electromagnetic wave, we be people of grey colour. But because of light, we look colourful, we have blue shirt, <coughs> yellow shirt and so on. <coughs> Sorry, balik Mekah batu sikit <coughs> Now, one of the most important part of the history of life is the rise of the Western science in life and the Western scientists spend a lot of time on wave particle duality <coughs> The first ever photograph of life as both a particle and wave. <coughs> now, if you look carefully at the picture, the lower part, the red in color, those are particles. <coughs> those are particles. As you move on, in the bluish color, it, it looks like a wave. <coughs> Now, in the, in the past, during the early time, Christian Eugen and Isaac Newton uh, debate. Eugen, when he was 61, fully published wave theory of light, which again that he propagate as a disturbance. <coughs> One of the most important predictions of his theory was that light should propagate slower in the dense medium. Isaac Newton was working on this particular theory of light at the same time of Eugen. Due to the enormous effect of his theory on gravity, he was already considered a grandmaster of science. Therefore, his particular theory of light won the matter. Eugen came up with the theory of wave. At the same time, Newton came up with the theory of particles. But because of his standing, his theory comes forward. Next. <coughs> okay, Newton theory of light. Light composed of three of microscopic particles he called uh, 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 corpuscles. Shine a shine a ray against a mirror, and it bounces off in exactly the same way a ball would if it were thrown against the mirror. 
This is the idea of particle. <coughs> <coughs> First appear in the book of optic. Next. The next contribution is from Robert Hooke and Thomas Young. Newton had a great rival, Robert Hooke, who also published a theory of light supporting the wave like nature. He attacked him by claiming that his theory was wrong, and this led Newton to retract and disappear from the scientific matters for several years. During that time, people assumed that Newton has gone mad. He, he went to a period of madness after this period of time. <coughs> then the wave era starts, Thomas Young. Thomas Young was born in 1773. Newton had died in 1727 and provided the first strong evidence that light was a wave. He performed an experiment where he take a normal light source and use a double slit and he see interference pattern. And you find that interference pattern in school can only form when you make the assumption that light is a wave. You can get interference. But if light is a particle, you can never get interference pattern. And this proves that light takes the form of waves. Next. Wave domination. One of the guys that strengthened the theory of wave was Fresnel, 1870. The French Academy of Sciences was very concerned on the, on the theory nature of light, whether it's a wave or a particle. It created a competition, and Fresnel, at a very young age, 29 years old at the time, has developed a theory that showed that light must be a wave. And it was a long debate, about five years, before his work was accepted. <coughs> <coughs> While working in this equation, Maxwell contributed significantly that said that light is a wave, and he has developed a very important theory, the electromagnetic wave equation, and this was put forward by Maxwell, and, uh, and this important discovery that said that from his wave theory, electromagnetic wave, he, after doing this wave theory, he discovered this one constant. The value of this constant it comes to a value about 300,000 km per second, and it forced Mo uh, Maxwell to ponder about the nature of light. It must be true that the light is in fact an electromagnetic wave. This second experiment, I mean, this second theory developed, this developed by Maxwell strengthened Fresnel. And this showed that light is a wave. And the most important thing about Maxwell, he invented color photography. <coughs> <coughs> the history of the laser. A trip from the light, fantastic. Now, photonic comes about because of the discovery about lasers and optical fiber. We will see in the history of time how laser was discovered and how optical fiber was discovered. And these two important discoveries Form the, form the platform of what we call the photonics era now. And this idea was put forward as early as 1918 by Max Planck, which shows that the energy quanta of any transition can be given in terms of particles, okay? And then you find that this energy can also be in the frequency of radiation. And this Planck theory, I think we learned in school, is just how you relate particles to waves and so on. His theory marked a turning point in physics and inspired up and coming physicists such as Albert Einstein. So Planck inspired Albert Einstein to further develop the theory of light. Next. So Albert Einstein, a very important quote that he says here. <coughs> important quote. Uh, everybody here. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Everybody is a genius. But if, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. So it's very important saying by Albert Einstein, everybody is clever. So in 1970, Einstein proposed the process that makes laser possible called the stimulated emission. It's a, it, uh, it's a very important foundation for lasers. He theorized that 
Besides absorbing and emitting light spontaneously, electron could be stimulated to emit light of a particular wavelength. But it would take nearly 40 years before scientists would be able to amplify this emission, proving Einstein correct and putting lasers on a path to become a powerful and an important tool for mankind. In 1951, Charles Taos, as mentioned by Phyros, <coughs> of, of uh, Columbia in New York, conceived his major microwave amplification of simulated emission of radiation ideal world while sitting on a park bench in Washington. And then in the period of 1954, working with Ziegler and graduate student James P. Gordon, Towns demonstrated the first major at Columbia University, the ammonia major, the first device based on Einstein prediction, obtained the first amplification and generation of electromagnetic wave. And this made use of Einstein either, and this is the first demonstration of Maser in microwave. Next. The push, the push of Volcanic's era is primarily due to two important discoveries. As what we mentioned, the, this week is the last day of discovery. The most important discovery is the invention of lasers and optical fiber. Next. And gives you some idea about lasers. <coughs> <coughs> You find that <laughs> the first graph shows the process of simulated emission. If I have a photon that is being incident onto an atom, this photon can stimulate the atom which is in the higher state to eventually to decay to the ground state and also to be emitted with the same frequency and in phase with the incident photon. And now one photon becomes two photons. If I have the third atom, I will have the two photons become three photons, and this is a process of multiplication. And this is the fundamental process of laser. And the second figure you find a typical laser in the early days, 1960, is a ruby laser. You have a ruby rod, a real ruby, a ruby rod itself, and around the red, along, around the red, the rod, you wrap a lamp, a circular lamp, a, what they call the helical lamp, and then you excite a gas discharge in the lamp. And then the lamp will emit all the light. Eventually, this light will be absorbed by the chromium ion in the ruby, get excited, it decay, <coughs> then it will be amplified and give you a very strong light in the red color. And if you look at the third photograph, it gives you a process of, of amplification. <coughs> this is a typical laser that you have in a simple form. You basically have a gain medium where you need to give energy to the gain medium. There's no pointer. <coughs> okay. <coughs> this is a gain medium. It can be a ruby rod that I showed you just now. It can be a gases, it can be a liquid, it can be anything. This is a gain medium. What we normally do, we use a source of light, light or can be electrical discharge, electron, that will hit onto this gain medium and this gain medium, gain medium will be excited will be excited into the higher state eventually this higher state as I showed you in the early uh, slide can you go to the last slide? what happened now if I am able to excite the gain medium into a higher state I call E2 and then I have an incident photon this incident photon can come itself from the gain medium it comes from the gain medium itself it comes approaches to the excited atom and then this Excited atom will induce this excited photo, this photon will induce this higher state atom to decay to the ground state and to emit another photon. And this photon and this photon are in phase, having the same frequency and the same phase as the incident photon. Now, one become two is called amplification. In this case, the amplification is two. And this idea is being conceived by Einstein in the early 19th century and only been able to translate it into a working device in 1950s. And this is the idea of laser. This is the basic principle of laser where light is amplified. Now, if I look at this case now, one single atom amplified give you one photon, the second atom will give you another photon become two, the third one become three, the fourth become four, 
and then you find that from one you can get one million photon and then one million photon will come out coherently and give you a very powerful light beam and now if you look next one if you look and this is the principle I excite the medium using a light source or any other mechanism I excite and make this medium to be in the highest state excited therefore some light that comes out from here will be amplified and then you find a very powerful beam eventually this beam can come out so powerful you can even shoot down a particular missile even you can use laser to shoot down aeroplane missile jack fighter and it can be used to cut metal stainless steel and can be used to do operation in our body system to cut our skin to, to do many things so laser can be so powerful that it has so many applications now if you look at this pointer that I hold now is a red pointer, a very simple pointer this pointer are basically a laser diode pointer but if you look at some people they use a long pointer green in color you will come across people use a green pointer a green pointer you find a green pointer you cannot make a green laser diode until today people cannot make a green laser diode although they can make a blue laser diode they cannot make a green laser diode so the green pointer actually it comes from a real laser system it's a very complicated laser a very complicated technology in a pointer that you buy at 30 ringgit but the technology in those days cost you about million see how thick has changed you have two battery <coughs> this battery what it does generate a light from a laser diode wavelength about infrared 808 infrared and this wavelength infrared go into a crystal a second harmonic crystal eventually the 808 will be able to produce a green a, a yak laser 1064 and this 1064 travels into a second harmonic crystal eventually you get you divide by two you get a green color the green light comes from if you look the technology of sec of second harmonic a very complicated te uh, very complicated te uh, technology second harmonic crystal and then you have a laser diode pumping a yak crystal to give you infrared 1064 and then you have battery and the complicated electronics here and this is a green pointer that people use all the time in their presentation you can buy that in the market about 30 ringgit or 50 ringgit and the, and the whole technology is a very complicated laser sign laser sign at the highest level in this pointer you find that laser sign at the highest level actually so the one that I have now is a red pointer it's very simple it's only a laser diode it has no uh, complicated technology here all right Next. And then one of the next important discovery of laser are being done by people like uh, Lebedev Physical Institute in Moscow. You must understand, Russian scientists are as good or sometimes can be better than the American scientists. The Russian scientists are very good. Okay, they have they developed very important theory, very important ideas in the early days. Even until today, you find that Russia produced a fantastic technology now. And you have people like Basov and uh, Prokhorov attempt to design and build oscillator. They propose a method for the production of negative absorption that was called the pumping method. And this was further investigated first by people like uh, Nicholas of Harvard University. And this further developed the idea of lasers until People like Maimon, next slide. Maimon, Tilio Maimon, this guy, a very important physicist at Yush Research Laboratories. If you know Yush, Yush do tools for oil and gas industry, and they also make aeroplanes. But at the same time, they do work in lasers. And he was the first man that demonstrate a working system of laser based on ruby. All right. So he used a cylinder of synthetic ruby <coughs> measuring of 1 cm in diameter and 2 cm long with the end silver coated to make them reflective and able to serve as a fabric resonator and Maimon used uses photographic flash lamp as the laser pump source and this was the first demonstration of laser although laser was conceived earlier 
through theory from Charles Tao, but he was the first person that demonstrated a working laser. Now, there is a big debate in the early days, in the 1960s, go back to the next, to the early slide. They were, there was a big debate, until today it finally been resolved. One of the most important debate that we have in that early days, you know, uh, uh, the issue of, 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 of patent. You see, in the American system, in the American system, you can file ideas, you can file patent for ideas, you can file patent for ideas. So people like Gordon Gould, fam his famous notebook show here, a famous notebook here, shows that he conceived the idea of how a laser can work, how a laser co can work. He conceived an idea now, but it's not being demonstrated. So uh, Gordon Gould showed that laser can, can be made from his idea, but he did not show the working system. And he filed for the patent, and he lost the patent in the early days. Eventually now, he won the patent. He won the patent. Next time. But the first demonstration, you must understand, was done by Maiman. He was the first guy that demonstrated a working laser system. So, after that period of time, 1962, group at General Electric, IBM, MIT, if you look carefully for my corporate friends, for my corporate friends, for my friends from the industry, if you look into the American system, or in fact in the Japanese system, if you look at their industry, people like IBM, you ask them, you ask yourself, why, what the hell people in IBM doing computers, General Electric doing jack planes, uh, jack engine, want to do lasers? You see, in their way of thoughts, they do not restrict their interest to a particular core business. They try to venture new areas and new opportunities. They always look at new opportunity. So we never we should never close our mind at new opportunity. You find that in the in the advanced country, in countries like America, Japan, Europe, you find big companies, they venture new technology and new ideas, not restricting to their existing core business. You took like IBM, they do lasers. And in 1962, you find that the first conceived idea of a semicon laser. Now, it's a very important thing that you see here. <coughs> semicon laser is just a PN junction. You have the, the positive part and, and the negative part. What you do, you create electron electron hole pairs. When electron hole pairs recombine, you have that light that comes out, the light that comes out. And this is laser. Any light that comes out together in a very coherent manner is called laser. Light that comes out together in a very coherent manner is called laser. And a typical laser diode that you find in the market these days that has been so very widely in the world now, uh, typically it looks like this. You have the laser chip somewhere around here, the, the, the laser diode sits here, and then you have, a, you have the photodiode here, you have a thermistor to measure the temperature, you have a cooler to cool the laser diode because when you put very high current into a PN junction, it gets very hot. You put very high current, you look at this point, a positive charge, negative ground, you put very high current discharge, you can eventually burn the PN junction. So you have to cool it. <coughs> and this cooling is being done by a Peltier cooler, a TC, a Peltier cooler, that cools the laser diode chip. And these are all the pin connections that make the laser work. And these type of lasers are available in the market and they are not very cheap, they cost about 10,000 each. Alright. And the next important that discovery, because this is a discovery week, the next important discovery will be discovery of fiber optics. As far back as the Roman time, you know that fiber optics idea has been conceived as early in the man, in the mankind, as, 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 as you know, early during the Roman time. Glass has been drawn into fiber, yet it was not until 1790s that the French Czech brothers invented the first optical telegraph. It was a system comprised of a series of lights mounted on towers where operators would relay a message from one tower to the next. Over the course of the next century, great strides were made in optical science. So as early during the Roman time, people had conceived optical fiber. As early as that, you see, people in those days, they are as clever as what we are now. They have conceived, the only limitation they have during that period of time, they might not have the proper equipment and the proper facilities. 
but that does not prevent them from thinking. So thinking power is very important. You should not disadvantage yourself and say, I do not have a facilities to, to do great things. So you can do great things even without facilities. So this, this shows you that during the early time, Roman time, during the French time, people do and conceive idea about optical communication. If you look now, this idea is the principle of optical communication. <coughs> and then, <coughs> in 1840, physicists like Daniel and Jack shows that light could be directed along jacks of water from for fountain display. People have shown that water can conduct light. Like how we have copper wire conduct electricity, you find that any medium, any trans uh, transparent medium, let it be glass structure, it can be even a water. Water itself can conduct light. So he demonstrated that, that water is a form of how you can uh, bring light together. Now in the early, in the early days, nobody able to control light. You have light because you find that electrical charges you can control the electron by applying electric field. But light you cannot control. You cannot bend the light. The only way to bend the light is to use medium like glass or water how to bend your light. And these are very important innovation that takes place. These are great innovation that take place in the early days. And this was also being demonstrated by British uh, physicists that demonstrated that light could travel through a curved stream of water, thereby proving that light signal could be bent. That's a very important um, milestone that light signal could be bent. Early days, we know that light cannot be bent, but this demonstration shows that light signal can be bent. And people like Alexander Graham Bell patented an idea of optical, te optical telephone and as early as in 1880. Next. The same year, people like William Wheeler invented a system of light pipes lined with a highly reflective coating that illuminated homes by using light from an electric arc lamp placed in the basement and directing the light around the home with the pipe. And this is a very important idea consists as early as in those days. And people now, if you look in the current years now, modern architects are making buildings without having to use electricity during the daytime lighting. You find that even they can have solar cells. What they can do, they can take using optical fiber and put the fiber uh, directly above the sun and that fiber can be routed into the building structure and to provide the lighting during daytime. You, don't need, you do not need to use a lamp. And if you add in a solar cell to your building structure, you find that you can store light into the solar cell. Eventually at night, you can use the same fiber to bring light to the various room in your high-rise building. And this idea, if you look carefully, that people are doing now, now modern Modern building, which we call green building, we we talk so much about green building now. <coughs> they use optical fiber in the building structure, but this idea was conceived in the early days by William. Invented a system of light pipe in the house where he transmit light from the outside into the house. And people like a medical doctors like Ruth and Rouse of Vienna use bent glass rod to illuminate body cavities in 1888. So people have used bent glass rod to see your body system in your, in your... If you look, if you go to hospital and you have something wrong with your stomach or your colon, endoscopy is nothing more than optical fiber. Endoscopy is just optical fiber that's been illuminated into your body system to see what's wrong with your stomach or your colon. And this thing was conceived, this idea was conceived by, in 1888, using a bent glass straw. So people have been doing this as early as in those period of time. In 1920, uh, you have a patented idea of using a race of transparent rod to transmit images for television. And people like Hazard did the same for Faxima. And this is how fax, fax machines are being, uh, being born or being developed through this idea. And then you find the first person to transmit an image through a bundle of optical fiber in 1930. It was an image of a light bar, filament. His intent was to look inside inaccessible part of the body. And this is the fundamental of new discovery in medical sciences. Next. And then you find that in, in 1961, people like Elias Schneider of American Optical 
first demonstration of how light can be conducted in a single mode optical fiber. And this is the most one of the most important discovery of optical fiber. You find that he demonstrated how light can be conducted in a single mode fiber using glass structure. Eventually, this idea was was based by Charles Kau and Charles Kau and George Ockham of Standard Communication Laboratory was the first person that demonstrated optical fiber and achieved a very low loss in optical fiber. And eventually, this is history. And in 1970, people like Koenig and so on, people like Lucent developed optical fiber, which forms the basis of our optical network today. <coughs> And this gives you some ideas, if you look in this insert, some, some, some idea of the photograph here. And this is our, our existing optical networks now. If you look, when you use your smartphone, when you look at your smartphone, when you use Twitter account or Facebook account, you are constantly on Google search engine. You are, you are constantly communicating in the west coast of US. These are all your servers. Your server is all around here by Google's. They are all in San Francisco. The server of Google's are all in San Francisco. They have fantastic server, very huge server. They are in the west coast of US. If you look at this part here, these are all optical cables. These are all optical cables are connected to Malaysia here. If you look, here is Malaysia, where we communicate through our Google search, googlesearch.com. .com will have a signal that travels from Malaysia to the part the, the ASEAN part to China and from the China you go to Japan, Japan go to US, eventually go to San Francisco and then you open up a page here and the page comes back immediately and immediate response to you to Malaysia. You do this hardly a second. <coughs> if you look carefully now, what actually happened, the light travels all the way from Malaysia through Mersing or through Kuantan, our international gateway that travels along in the cable few hundred thousand, uh, tens of thousands of kilometers. It travels all the way until San Francisco and open the page here. The light, then the page information transfer back to the uh, Pacific, back to you. And then you communicate constantly. Your smartphone use a lot of light. If you look carefully, you might not, you might not realize. Each time you push a button, you use tremendous amount of light that communicate between you and the server at San Francisco and you make the light work so hard for you and you find that these are the important development that we make by in the areas of photonics that make our life so much convenient it become a lifestyle and if you don't believe me if you have a cable cut if you have a cable cut somewhere around here people cut the cables or through some means you find that your world will be lost. You, you find that you don't serve, you do, you're not able to serve the net anymore. You find this happen, I think back. You find that we are so lost, we cannot communicate. So how important is internet now? <coughs> now, these two important discovery. What we have come now, I, bring up, I, I have made a presentation from the early days of 380,000 before Christ. How people discover light, how people discover light. Eventually you come to the last 40 years of our life where light, where this discovery, the two most important discovery that take place in our life is the invention of lasers and then the invention of optical fiber. These two inventions is a mother of, of all invention in photonic. It's the greatest invention of photonic. And photonic is an era, is a very important era it's a site and technology of generating, controlling, and detecting particles of light known as photon. And photonics underpins many technologies of daily life, such as smartphones, which you have in your pocket now, laptops, which you may have carried, internet connection, medical, medical instrument, and lighting devices. If you see a medical doctor in last 30 years, you see an Indian doctor or a Sikh doctor, they do not have any fantastic equipment, they can tell you what is your sickness. But if you go to a medical doctor now, in any hospital, what they will do, they will run you 100 of tests. They will run you 100 of tests, first they do your blood test, after your blood test, they do your scan, they do many things before they can even pinpoint what's your sickness. 
that shows now medical science rely heavily on physics. Rely heavily on physics. Without physics, you find there's no innovation of medical sciences. Everything about medical sciences, you find if you really look carefully how you measure your blood pressure and so on, everything boils down to the principle of physics. And you find that photonics is a very important milestone that open doors, open doors, open opportunity in so many innovation in the area of medicine, in the area of defense science, in the area of communication and manufacturing. All our cars are being manufactured by lasers now. It's all lasers. Welding has been done by lasers. It's no, it's no more arc welding. It's all laser light. Everything now in the car industry, any heavy machinery in that heavy machinery industry, everything are laser based. And in communication, everything are laser. In defense, you find drones that you read all the time in Afghanistan, everywhere. Drones, drones using smart system, all boils back to light. Everything all about light has changed our lifestyle. Next. And then you find that application of, of photonics, it has a great impact on many different market segments such as energy, medicine, defense, communication, but as, as such, it's not always highlighted in available data about this area. Many other countries have invested heavily in research and development and also in manufacturing of photonics component and system. The area of optics and photonics is typically subsumed as an uh, important technology under the heading of other, other disciplines such as electrical engineering and physics. Optics is a very important area of science that generate applications such as DVD players and is the economic impact to the manufacturing industry. How do we place a value on the fact that the society transforming internet could not have grown as such a fast pace or achieve even close to the current level of uh, performance without low loss optical fiber, laser diode and photo detectors. <coughs> Healthcare and lifetime is very important. It's everything about life now is very important. And it's a very important area of new therapies from lasers, heart surgery. You find that you don't have to put and do, if you go for your heart, if you have a blockage of your of your vessel in your heart, you can have an option to go bypass or you can use angioplasty or you can also use laser to remove your plaque in your, uh, in your vessel. So lasers are a very important source of how can help you to have a better life and it's called uh, minimally invasive uh, technology for knee repairs. It makes possible atroscope containing optical imaging system, optical techniques such as uh, non-invasive uh, di uh, di diagnostic and monitoring application, early detection of breast cancer. Breast cancer are able to detect at the earliest stage using laser. You may have heard there are so many methods now based on optical system that can detect early signs of cancer. Improved microscopic and spectroscopic method will allow us to understand and manipulate cell processes so that we can cure cancer. Until today, we cannot cure cancer. We can only extend our life, tissues, and other of, uh, other organisms. And these are important things that uh, life has played in our lifestyle, in our healthcare and life sciences. Right? Optical sensing, lighting, energy. As you see, we are sitting in a very important theater. <coughs> this uh, this uh, planetarium. You see all the screens all around you and without the screen and the display you have without light you don't have this actually so these are very important development of light and you find that in this uh, diagram lighting now what we have optical fiber lighting in bundles that can light the whole room and this light does not come from electricity it comes it will be connected right on top on top of your rooftop and collect light from the sun from the sun it goes into optical fiber bundles it will route into all the building, eventually it becomes like a light source you believe. You did not use you not, did not have to use electricity anymore. And you find that uh, in the modern days warfare you have infrared uh, viewers and so on. And these are smart smart technology. You can see people in the dark and so on. Next. And optics in manufacturing is a very important industry, extremely important industry. You find that these are very important picture 
you can make, for instance, lab on chip, you find that eventually you, you can detect yourself in the, in the most low cost manner. If you go for any blood sample test now, it can cost you a couple of hundred ringgit. But with the lab on chip, you find that you need a small sample, you don't need to have three bottles of the blood, you only, only a small prick, and you can do many type of tests using lab on chip. So these are very important discoveries that help us to better, our, to better our care of our life using lasers, actually using lasers in life. And these are things that laser cutting in the industry as well as many other applications. And in defense, uh, you find that we have defense, the drones, uh, the smart bomb and so on. I think you are very familiar. And one of the most important applications of faltering is being pushed forward by Audi. Audi were the first people that used light emitting diode in their day running light. They were the first people who used light emitting diode in their day in their running light. And you find that lighting are used more frequently uh, in cars in using light emitting diode. And modern cars, if you look carefully, they have a lot of sensor. And in the modern car, you find that there are a lot of optical fiber, a lot of faltering. 30% of the car component now in the modern cars are based on faltering. Okay. And the, the most important development of photonics are in communication. Telecommunication, you find explosive growth in many areas of optical technology, constitute an optics revolution. All elements of information transport are likely to require optical fiber and laser, including now we are talking about 100 gigabits per second access network, passive optical network, power system. Uh, you may have come across Unify at your home, and the minister complained we don't want to pay for Unify, we want to pay for streaming because we cannot afford, but you find that Unify costs quite high and you compare to countries like South Korea and Japan, they are cheaper compared to us. They also have fibers. Uh, right now, Unify will have uh, will, uh, have fiber right at to your doorstep, not to the curb on the road, but right to your home, right to your doorstep. You have an optical network unit there. Therefore, you can have a very high bit rate transfer from the server to your home to your computer. So we have Unify. We have fiber to the home that's being developed rapidly in this country. And, and the early stage, we do install some of them in Subang Jaya and so on. And then, and then we have a very important development in our campus by optical splitter for fiber to the home and also a development of 1300 nanometer optical amplifier and multi wavelength optical sources, broadband sources, low noise optical amplifier, and so on. Next. The electronics, the economics of photonics is huge. I'll just run through quickly only two slides before I stop. A case study of lasers, see the invention of lasers in 1960 and after more than 50 years, you find that lasers in every aspect of the industry. The laser exhibit many characteristics of a general purpose technology. Other examples include information technology, uh, steam power and electrical. These are the most important te uh, technology. You find that laser itself has been transformed by a series of important innovations with numerous new types of lasers developed over the past 50 years. The economic impact of lasers is provided by Beers and Slatter's 2014 study of optical science and OSTPT, such as the market about 1 trillion US dollars in 2009 2010. Now will be multiple more, more than 1 trillion. <coughs> in the biomedical sector, it's about 2.5 trillion of lasers are being used. In communication, about 4 trillion. In communication alone. You can see how big is the market in the areas of photonics. Next. Market size and employment. Data on revenues, employment, and RD spending in 209 and 2104, 282 of, of the 285 publicly traded photonic country has been uh, surveyed by OIDA. The total revenues of 282 public companies comes to about 166 billion US dollars. And the you know R&D employs 7.4 million individuals because right now you find that US just recently last week has put nearly 1 billion into photonic because that will be the new source of employment. The main concern about US is to create new employment. The new employment can only be created by in the new industry such as photonic industry. Next, major initiative around the world. There are many major major initiatives around the world. 
And you find that in US, they have what they call National Photonic Initiative. They pump so much money, billions and billions into photonic as the next driver for the 21st century of industry and job opportunity. And this is a major concern for us because you find that we are not able to catch up with that eventually if we don't start to put money in this area. Major photonic institute and center existed in all universities in the US. For example, Center of Research and Education in Optics and Laser Creo in, uh, in uh, Florida. And we have about 30 faculty members and so many. They have so many centers of institute that support the birth of new, of birth of new industry. Next. And European Union, Union also follows suit. They have so many programs called SP7 College. Now under Horizon 2020, they put few billion into the area of the photonic. Europe has about 20% of the of the Europe 200 billion of global market in the area of the photonic. And now they are being superseded by China. China is spending billions and billions in the area of the photonic. China is the biggest threat to us. And next. Japan, the same thing. Next. South Korea spent a lot of money in uh, in uh, photonic. For example, they created many clusters, photonic clusters in South Korea and China. They have what they call 12 five year plan on science and technology development was released by the Ministry of Science and Technology in July 2011. 2011 action plan fostering strategic new industry. <coughs> Few billion was put forward into this in this area uh, to foster new industry. And then the main emphasis on China development in fostering are optical communication. That's where you have both of industry like Huawei. They were non existent in the last 15 years, you never heard about Huawei in the last, uh, the last 20 years or SE, you never heard of them. And out of these 20 years, the, the Chinese government has put so much money, eventually you give birth to Huawei. They are one of the major suppliers of optical components now in this, in this world now. No, next, not one, go ahead. And then you find that the objective are to realize key technology breakthrough through innovation to build a complete value chain. China wants to build a complete value chain in the photonic industry. That's very important. They want to build a complete value chain. And to strengthen China's overall comp competitiveness in the selected area of photonic. They want to become world champion. Eventually, they want to beat European. They, I think as today's standing, they are, they are ahead of the uh, European. Eventually, they're going to overtake the United States of America. They are supported by numerous research institutes or center or key state laboratory. China has a very large amount of key state laboratory. This is equivalent to what we have created in the Ministry of Education. We call the high suite. We have high suite in the Ministry of Education. We have very limited numbers, only until today about 12. And if you look at China, they have so many of them under the name of key state laboratories. They have federal, federal laboratories, state laboratories, and province laboratories. And China is a very big powerhouse in the area of faltering. I think we have to be in the race with China or at least complement the activities taken by China. China went from having no company in 1998 in the top 10, in, in the top 10 largest telecommunication companies in the world to having three such companies in 2001, for example, like Huawei and so on. Okay. ASEAN, Singapore is putting a lot of money. What happened to Singapore? They are a very rich country. They are basically a very rich country. A, a city state, they have a lot of money. They don't have to repeat the history. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. What they have done, they spend 40 million Sing dollars and buy every facility from uh, Opto Electronic Research Center, uh, Opto Electronic Research Center from Ministry of Science. They buy it. and they transfer everything to NTU. So they spend 40 million Sing dollars. And they have few more development in Singapore to push photonic development in Singapore. NTU Photonic Center has 57 full-time staff, 32 students, founded in 1994. Purpose is to be Singapore's center of excellence for training and basic research and applied research in photonic. And then you have an uh, Optimus Photonic Centers of Excellence. All right. And these are tied up with uh, ORC, one of the major research centers in the world, with a 10 million grant. And then you have Thailand. Thailand is not really developed as Malaysia. Next. In Indonesia, nothing. Brunei, nothing. Cambodia, nothing. Laos, nothing. Vietnam, limited. Malaysia is not bad. We have done quite well. 
Although on a very limited scale with the existing limited budget, we always have limited budget. Maybe we have a lot of uh, policy makers here. Maybe this can be an eye, uh, eye opener for policy makers. We have to put money in research. And we cannot, we cannot all the time ask for return in 20 years, 30 years. Science doesn't take that time, 20 years to give you return. It may take 100 years, 50 years. You find the most important thing is to create the critical mass, to create as many people in the areas of, uh, in a particular area. And you have more people, more ideas will start to fly around and then, find, and then you find that you can get great innovation. And that's where you have commercialization. We cannot be asking commercialization, commercialization in 10 years, in 20 years. It's impossible. First thing, you don't have the right number of manpower involved. You need to have a critical mass, the right number of manpower involved. More people should be working in the same area. And you've got to invest a lot of money in your, in your R&D first. And then from there, you find that idea will come out and you find industry will be born naturally. You don't have to push for it. It will happen. People will, if you make things more flexible, people can become rich easier. People will start to develop more product and able to commercialize things and be competitive as compared to China or Singapore. And we have a lot of activities <coughs> which university player has nurture. In fact, we can claim we have nature. We have nurture. University player can put a claim today. We have nurture many photonic activities in this country through very generous, very generous support from Mosti. I'm very grateful to Mosti. Mosti people is here. I am extremely grateful why I stand here, thanks to Mosti, and uh, we, we got generous funding. We have nurtured many people in the area of photonics through collaborative collaboration through Mosti and funding that we develop people in USM. We have quite a lot of people working in photonics in USM, Insulin, Unimap, UMP, UTM, UITM, and UKM and UM. UM is the, is the anchor for all this project. Right? And this uh, photonic market, as you know, photonic market is quite big in this country. Fiber to the home itself is about 11 billion. Right? Photonic research contribution to national building, we have, we have through a collaboration from UM started photonic in 1979. <coughs> we start photonic in a very early age, 1979. Around that many years, we have, uh, we are quite responsible enough to claim that we have produced nearly more than 100 people in the area of the photonics. Thanks. Okay? And we have, we have one of the, we have a very good, UM has a very good facilities for photonics, a very well equipped uh, uh, facilities in uh, waveguide science, in, to make devices, to make splinters, we, have, we are able to make any type of optical amplifier, we are able to make many of the products in photonics. Next. And this is the uh, advancement of photonic knowledge in Malaysia. We help to develop. We uh, we help to develop. We we try our best to contribute in this area of photonics in this country. We try to develop. We take a lot of students for PhD and master, and we are able to develop many photonics area in this country. As given to you in this slide, this is a very important slide. You find that after 30 years, UM has contributed quite significantly into new knowledge foundation in this country. For instance, the multi wavelength fiber laser. We develop Reline, Ultrashock pulses, nano material, double pass EDFA. These are very important areas that we have uh, developed. And we have produced a very large amount of publication in the world. And we can be considered as one of the top center in, in, in the world, actually. And if you look, these are the various platform, uh, platform technology that we move from fibers into eventually we are doing graphic or nano photonics material. Okay. And moving forward in education is very important, as I discussed just now with Dr. Fairos, uh, as being is a very important uh, period of time that we have the policy maker here. We have to be working together. It's very important for us to work together, hand in hand, and try to make science a very important agenda in this country. Because you find the number of science students now is declining. For what reason? God knows. But we have to address the problem and find ways how to improve and how, find ways how to encourage them to do science. To me, one of the best policy we should make science compulsory until Form 5. Because if you do science compulsory in Form 5 all the way through, 
Even after Form 5, they have no interest to get on site. They can still be an accountant, they can still be a lawyer. There's no problem actually. So, but what we have more, more number of students to sign, you find that scientific community are very important for the development of countries. Country developed through scientific community. And education plays a very important role. We have to work together with the Ministry of Education. We have to work very, very closely with the Ministry of Science. How to promote science, how to make innovation as the next level of activity in this country, such that we can produce innovative product. Eventually, it can be well creation for this country. Okay. And commercialization, I have nothing in case it. Uh, I think it will take some more time before we can even come to that stage. Thanks. Okay. I think I can stop here. Thank you very much. I think I can more than one hour. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you dan uh, saya minta supaya cahaya we have, we have light, is it? Is yeah. light, is it? we need light, we need photon <laughs> photon please yeah. ok, uh, saya rasa sebelum uh, apa ni, memulakan sesi soal jawab anda perlu memperkenalkan di angkat tangan dan perkenalkan diri untuk um, bertanya suara-suara sekarang sesi dibuka untuk sesi soal jawab You are free to ask questions. I think it's very important for us to ask questions because of uh, my apology for my cough. Because after coming back last week, I, I got some cold. Eventually, I got into cough, but it's uh, uh, tapering down. But once you that, when once you have cough, you are in the aircon room, you get worse. But uh, I, we are open to questions. I think if you have any questions, please, please be free to ask. Jadi kepada sesuatu yang ada soalan, silahkan katakan dan kenalkan diri dan bertanya Jadi, jadi presentasi ini sedikit hentik Jadi, saya telah dikatakan oleh virus Untuk mengeliminasi Kepada 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 We talk about yeah, fiber optics. Yeah, yeah. So I would go for the next level, like a uh, optics precision, precision optics. <laughs> Now we focusing on fiber optics. Yeah. So when we going to the uh, precision optics? We are, we are, we are there now. Uh -huh. In fact, if you look into the laser system, the laser system uh -huh. is all about, uh, about the precision optics. Is a uh, locally manufacturing? Or <laughs> I, I have one company that approached me some time back. Then uh, last time they came to see me, then there was no uh, follow-up. I think they should be. You came to see me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there was never uh, never follow-up. I think. Uh, but to be honest with you, sir, uh, we we use lenses, but uh, we don't really spend our time on on uh, on the precision of things. We are mostly towards uh, lasers and fibers. Well, uh, thank you very much for mostly. Recently, you gave a grant for. We are going to develop a uh, weapon scope. We already started the project. Yeah. Maybe this is the first project in we develop locally. A to Z, we do locally. That is good. I think this is a very important area. I think, uh, is it a weapon sign? Yeah, weapon sign. Yeah, it's a very important area. Defense are very important. Uh, because we are not in defense. Because the problem being in defense project, I must share with you. Because we are in the teaching business, we are in the teaching business. Alright, we are in the teaching business, we teach students. And then the next job function we have to do, we have to publish paper. But once we are in different project, you find that a lot of information are restricted. So we cannot publish paper, you work, you work in, with the army and so on. The things are get, get very complicated. So we try to stay away from different project. We are more on the commercial project. Thank you, yeah. Any question? Any other questions? Maybe the young people can ask questions. You can yeah. ask questions, don't have to be shy. Tanya tak suka segan. Tanya tak suka segan. Mungkin kita balik, kita tunjuk. Kita tak suka segan. Tak suka segan.
Kalau kita ada satu uh, pandangan yang lebih jauh, our bandwidth become smaller. So to provide a multimedia punya facilities on your smartphone, your base station should be near. So bila kita communicate, orang katakan you want to use a smartphone. Like I use it in my office computer, I plug to my internet, I go straight to the international gateway. So macam smartphone ni, you can you can still search on your smartphone, you can put google.com. Once you put google.com tu, .com CWS tu, .com tu means server dekat San Francisco Kalau .com, .my tu maybe kat Malaysia Kalau .com tu no .my tu server dekat San Francisco You don't communicate anything dekat Malaysia That's why you face, you have Facebook, you have everything See, American can monitor you very closely You find that cloud, small cloud to your file People monitor very closely Because they access on the server That's why they encourage, they encourage you to use cloud So that they know what you have Because all the cloud are being kept in the server in, in the in US Because they are so worried about uh, terrorists So they want to have everything at their, at their disposal So what actually happens when you click that call You pergi to your base station, you pakai messy messy base station Eventually you will have to use Teleco punya cables Teleco is the only country, the only uh, uh, service provider that provide optical fiber network Messi pinjam, dia akan hire Teleco punya fiber DG pakai Teleco punya fiber Teleco is the person who have all the fiber So bila dia pakai fiber fiber Teleco <coughs> Then they will connect to KL office KL office go to either We have two international gateway Satu dekat Kuantan, satu dekat Mersing So that go to a cable called APN Asia Pacific Network Ataupun AP, uh, Asian uh, apa ni, uh, China US cable So kita lompat atas submarine cable from our land cable, land cable, terrestrial land cable The signal lompat ke submarine cable yang atas lantai lautan <coughs> The submarine cable is on the floor bed of the sea actually So that submarine cable will go to the station San Francisco You pernah dengar kat internet, you pernah baca that uh, the The uh, Google want to hire, want to use their server and put next to the river Tapi it's not allowed by the American uh, city council They want to be, their server needs sea water to cool down They have fantastic amount of server Your server has to cool down constantly Because they're holding the traffic, the world traffic From Malaysia, everywhere Use.com, everything goes to uh, Google punya server lepas tu you tekan, you tekan you tekan you nak search katakan something lah kereta kereta Ferrari you search.com it goes to the server server tu ok cari mana Ferrari tu oh they transfer the page to you you nampak keluar muka dia it travels all the way the light travels from the first your electrical signal through RF travel to your base station base station convert into light so the signal convert the signal to carry but the convert from the carrier from Radio frequency into optical. Optical will travel very fast. <coughs> Speed of light. Boom, pergi ke service school. Then come back balik. 
You don't even realize it. You see the page buka. <coughs> Sorry. May I answer your question? So each each one of us linked to San Francisco now. Yes, all of you linked to San Francisco constantly. <laughs> constantly you are linked. <laughs> and the most the most important question you must understand. Who owned Black Blackberry? You heard about the story. The Blackberry, Blackberry, everything your email are being is being contained in the server in the US. Although it's a, it's a Canadian, uh, although Canadian uh, uh, company, but the the owner is a CIA. They own they own their company. Action, they call it uh, action in the motion of that. They own the company. So Google. It's owned by the American Intelligence Network. That's why in China, you cannot have Google. There's no Google in China. You go to China, you cannot serve Google. He lang you with the world. You go to China, you are lost. You cannot communicate. You cannot open anything based on uh, Google because China does not allow Google in, in, uh, in China. So you, you are all linked in China. That's how they can monitor your, your, your communication. They have keywords. Kalau bom, they can tahu sendiri. They have keyword that how they going to the monitor. And I believe antara kita Malaysia sampai ke uh, California ataupun uh, di mana tadi? San Francisco. San Francisco. So less than one second. Less than. Sana dan balik sini. Lagi. Less than that. Less than that. Oh. Begitu pantas. Eh? Pantas. You always you buka page tu, jadi you tekan kan you buka page. Okay, jadi keluar dah one page. Then you want to go to the next point. You tekan balik, you go balik. Go come back, go come back tu. Jadi balik, balik kerja. So that means spontan is going back and forth. Ah, macam dia tak. Malaysia, San Francisco, Malaysia. Ah, kalau foton, kalau foton tu Malaysia penat dia. <laughs> But of course, they are not human beings, so why should we care? They are only a, a light source. They carry information. They just carry for information, yeah. It's a carrier. You see, that's what happened. A lot of people never ne ne never realize how you communicate. We take things for granted. We have a smartphone. You never know how the technology developed in that smartphone. It take many years. So many people develop this technology. So many brain has gone into the development of your smartphone. Then you see your face, your friend, your Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. So many things have gone. And these are developed by the Americans, by the other people. But where is our role? We never contribute anything. We are only user only. So high time that we should play a very important role. We are policy maker now. How do we transform our community to become a contributor? One more yeah. question. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Again, please. Yeah. <coughs> the mic. The mic. As loud as I can. My name is Natasha. I'm just a public system work for Petronas. I like all this space talk. Um, um, actually, I'm very thankful because of scientists, what have they done, and it's very lacking of us appreciating them. I mean, I've been listening to Neil deGrasse, uh, Bill Nye, you know, and that's, we, we are lacking of, you know, like appreciating science compared to yeah. musicians and actors and, you know, yeah. all this art and stuff. I mean, no, nothing against art. So my question is that when you said just now, um, China, Europe, and they have been like trying to beat each other, right? Yeah. They got to learn all these patterns and all this. A lot of money has been actually been used by each country. I think scientists are different from. Um, I would say that way. You guys, even the the latest movie, the what last Martian thing. You know, it says like uh, they always want to work together. Why? Why don't you have a feeling that we should? They should the country should pool the money and work on something together instead of like try to beat each other to, to, to get um, you know development or faster result. Why can't you just pool one? I don't know. I'm just yes, I think that is a very a very valid question. I think you must understand the American work very closely with the uh, uh, with the European because they try to invest because you see the investment of money in research. Especially the sciences, the American invested huge amount of money, huge amount. It's beyond the comprehension. They spent so much money on on research. But you do not have American policy makers saying, "Where is my product?" You do not have that because to them, there is another phase. What they want to do now 
They want to encourage people to do research as many as they can. So they create the people, people power. The most important thing to create people power. People interested to do research. <coughs> people will start to increase their level of understanding. Their level of ability will be raised. And they become very creative. Eventually become creative. You know, you have more people. Let's say if I do a loan some work. I live in my house. I stay in my room. I become very creative, but only to myself. But let's say I will have about 20 people working together. Everybody will compete among themselves. Everybody, everybody want to show that they are smarter. Huh? That natural human being feeling how to be smarter than the rest is a very important feeling that God has given to us. We do not have the ambition or the ambition feeling of being smarter. We find that we can never develop things. So when we walk into a group, when we have a bigger number of people working in a particular area, you have what they call the critical mass. We do not have critical mass. We are a small country, 28 million. How many people do science? Very small number. And how, how do you expect this small number going to change the country? You can never expect that. Until cow come home, it will never happen. So we have to have radical change. Our policy maker must look things differently. How am I going to get something in the next 10 years? What are my plans? What are things that I'm going to place such that I can create a large number of people become so innovative? Eventually, you have thousands of people become educated with PhD, become very innovative. And then you make them hungry. You must make them hungry. You cannot have so many PhD and give them job. You must make sure you don't give half of them, you don't give them job. And make them hungry. When they are hungry, hungry people, are the most creative people. Yeah, people being deprived. De deprivation is the growth of culture. Deprivation is where culture are born. Innovation are created. <laughs> Maxwell is very poor in Scotland. He's a Scottish man. Extremely poor. No heating. But due to the poverty, to the poor period of time, they become very creative. Although of these people, you know the history of great men, they are poor people. They, because when they are poor, they want to work harder and become richer. So we look at the buggy people, everything, they become comfortable. Comfort zone, sit in, is very dangerous. People become lazy. People become very, very, uh, very comfortable. So you must produce a lot of people and make sure half of them are suffering. And then they, they become very creative. They become extremely creative. And I tell you, if you can do that, in 20 years, Malaysia can become the best nation in ASEAN. ASEAN market is 500 million. Do not worry about China. You can never get Chinese market. Huh? It's a fat dream only. A dream that will be just a dream. But what you can do now, work on ASEAN. ASEAN itself, 500 million. And three quarters of them still sleeping. But Vietnam, they're coming up very fast. Vietnam, Bank, uh, Thai are coming up very fast. We have to whack them. Take the opportunity, our strategy, everything, focus on ASEAN only. Don't look at the world. Why want to go to America? You can never go to market apply in America. Why you waste your time? You try to get into ASEAN. You hold the 500 million market. And Malaysia will become very rich. We will become the top nation in ASEAN. Then eventually we can compete the world. We have to be like that. We have to have plan. We must have plan. Game plan must be there. Okay? Please, sir. Yeah, my name is uh, Siwa Heng. I'm an engineer by profession. Yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> I was listening to your conversations and uh, I, I noticed one of the fundamentals actually is, uh, you see, it's yeah. Okay, hello? So, um, hello? 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 Yes. Okay. I think uh, this is a uh, very basic fundamentals uh, faced by many things, many people, is the policy makers. Uh, you have been keep saying that uh, policy makers. Uh, we realize that. So if you look at other uh, countries, how their policy makers were elected. So this goes into a bit of uh, the election system. And to really to have the policy makers who understand the driven power of science, driving power of science, uh, we need to vote or elect 
engineers and uh, scientists to be a policy makers. I think that is yeah, one good link. Yeah. Because we have too many accountants, the only problem we have in this country, we are very... The main thing, and I can ask you a question, uh, what you see, he has a very point, because you look, uh, you don't understand the difference between America and Britain. Okay. They used to say Britain is a dying old man. Uh, Britain as a nation is a dying old man. Dying old man. If you look into America, you see, America's system structure, they have been run by entrepreneurs. The American structure of business community are entrepreneurs, young businessmen. We look like Donald Trump. He can run as, a, as the, uh, the president. They are all entrepreneurs. American culture are entrepreneur culture. British culture are accountant culture. They have a lot of accountants. All the bosses of big industry are accountants. That's why you find Britain does not innovate as much as in the early days compared to America. Same thing with the European. They do not want to get trapped to be run by accountant. Because accountants are very important, but sometimes they can become very dangerous. Because they will look at money, I spend one dollar, where is my one dollar and fifty cent? But in doing sign, you give one dollar, you cannot expect one dollar and fifty cent. But after twenty years, your one dollar can become hundred dollars. Because the accountant couldn't wait the twenty years, they have to have balance sheet in every six months, or every quarter of the year, or a year. So the mindset must be changed, sir. The most important thing, we are not matured in running R&D. We haven't. We do not have full understanding about R&D. We do not understand how the fruit in R&D matured. We expect we plant the plant today. Tomorrow we find we have fruits. But if you plant, you you take. If you go agriculture, you you plant ten trees of pokok rambutan. Bukan semua ten rambutan untuk bear you fruit. Mungkin tiga akan mati. Mungkin dua tu akan just mando. Dia just don't have fruit. Maybe one, one tree will give you the fruit. But one tree they give you a fruit for all you know, the harvesting is so great, it can cover all the ten trees there. You see, you must understand science works like that. In, in the American system, they invest the money on last year, they invest. Even you look at angel capital, you look at venture capital in the American system, our capital, our venture capital does not come into a knowledge and ability of American venture capital. We do not come to the knowledge and ability of angel capital in US. And US, the system, if I'm very rich, I have some guy who come to see me, I find the idea is fantastic, I find the idea is good, I will pour my money to him. But I know, if I pour the money, the chances of me getting back will be zero. They never hope so much. <coughs> any investment, 100 investment, you ask any venture, venture capital, any 100 investment of, of any investment that they put into venture, only about five, less than 5% will bear fruits. And that 5% bear fruit, you have fruits like Apple, you have fruits like Microsoft, you have fruits like Facebook. All those fruits are giant fruits, not small fruits, giant fruits. And that fruits cover not even, not all the 100 investment that they have, maybe more that they cover. So kita can come to that culture. Bila kita pump into R&D, you must understand, we cannot expect return immediate. Because what we have been doing, we only start to pump money in R&D. Uh, uh, the fifth Malaysia plan. The fifth Malaysia plan, the tailing part. The tailing part of the fifth Malaysia plan and where we start to put money in R&D. Very small portion. And then we ramp up in six Malaysia plan onward. That's only about, you see, about, how many, about four or five plans, about 20 years. And that 20 years, what we have been doing, uh, sir, is only to build up infrastructure. To build up infrastructure. You need certain amount of money to build out certain infrastructure, certain amount of the facilities, and certain amount of skill set need to be put. And that will take time, 20 years, with certain amount of level of funding. But after 20 years, the next round of funding will be funding that will, will, that will be used for great innovation. And if you have the number of people, you are able to produce so many people that is able to work in a particular area, in the same area, and with the, with the money that you put then, you find that innovation will come naturally. I don't believe any Malaysian is far inferior from any, any Chinese from China or any from America. No. I tell you, there are Malaysians who make it big in China, there are Malaysians who make it big in Taiwan, there are Malaysians who make it big in US. We are not short of brain. But what is lacking us now, do we understand how to arrive there? Do we understand how to arrive there? That is a big problem. Are we able to drive ourselves to the end point? So brain is not a limitation. 
I don't believe it and I believe strongly in the next 20 years you'll find great nation around. Great nation around. Tuan-tuan dan perempuan, saya rasa masa sangat cemburu dengan One more question, I think last question Bagi tak ke? Wanita yang bertudung biru Hijau Hijau? Oh, saya nampak biru lagi Jadi, walk on my visa Everybody want to do nuclear physics. A lot of my friends did nuclear physics. Everybody want to make nuclear bomb. The the hip of the day. Ah, want to become nuclear scientist. But I said myself, well, well, well. Why you have to do everything the same with the rest? We should not be. I was interested. Laser create can make holes in the wall. Why not? You know. That's my interest. I just pick up the field because I think I was then interested in the uh, lasers. It's something new I want to venture into. That was my, my, my main interest. And I have no regret to be... I've been telling to many, many people. Many people. I think our mindset must, must, must be changed. A lot of our bright... I think you are a very bright student the way you thought you impressed me. So a lot of our bright, bright students, what they want to do Either they become a doctor, if they fail to become a doctor, they become an engineer. Simple, simple job choice. Because that's what the world need. The world need a doctor because you can cure the sick people. But eventually you find that there are not enough sick people to be cured. You know? Same thing, you don't have enough, enough uh, bridges to build. So I think a lot of us think very stereotype. Kita ni very stereotype. Kita punya job choices ni very simple. We are very simple people. Uh, nak jadi apa? Doctor, nak jadi apa? Engineer, lawyer. Right. Very simple. But we don't want to venture something different because we are so scared about unknown. We don't want to be end up in at the end of our lifetime, three to four years, without a job. Our main concern is always job, job, job. When I get my first year student, I change their mindset. I do I told you you are not here joining the joining the university for me to give you a job. I'm not your welfare department. Huh? I'm not uh, your job street. I'm not here to give you a job. I'm here to give you education. I'm here to provide you knowledge, to provide you new brain power, to you for you to think, for you to, to look things in a different perspective, to become cleverer, uh, to become more imaginative. That is my job. So that you become very useful at the end of three to four years. So bila kita ada this kelihatan, bila kita look in life, tak perlu nak fikir nak jadi doktor. I think nothing is great. I see, believe me. I interview so many uh, uh, doctor for job. Nothing, is, nothing to shout about lah. Maybe they earn. They, maybe they earn more. Maybe they earn more. Eventually, the market become very crowded. The money will not be there to share. Okay? So I think it's very important for you young people here to look job market in a different perspective. Janganlah fikir nak keluar nak keluar sini baca dan baca tu. It's not necessary. Do something that you like lah. The most important, do what your heart, your heart tells. If you like physics, do it physics. I do physics was my first choice. Because I could have done engineering if, if I want to. I wasn't interested. I, I never interested. I went to a, a technical school. I was in a mechanical. I never liked mechanical falling. Because my, my skin is soft, so I get tan, stained all the time. <coughs> so I think, I would, I would, I would prefer to do something. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think physics is my first choice. It was my first choice. Because I like physics. In fact, I, I, 
In fact, I like Max more. To be honest with you, I, I, I like Max more. But physics is quite natural for me because with my Max skill, I can do physics. So please, it's important the young mind don't think, don't be stereotyped, don't think something. Always, like, kau nak jadi apa? Doctor, engineer. Tak perlu lah. I'm telling you, you are very good. Uh, you can make money in any profession. You don't have to worry. Uh. It comes naturally. If you are very good, it comes so natural. Okay? So, yang, as I said, dua soalan tadi, yang kedua ialah apa yang masih... Why? Uh, there are a lot of... I tell you, physics is... Photon uh, uh, is very challenging. When you look at photon, you are looking at photon. Uh, Photon that have no match. You don't know how it looks like. There is no match. You don't know how it looks like. But you know, it behaves a particle. At some point of time, at some interaction, it behaves a particle. Because we use particle to explain the interaction. At some point, it becomes a wave. Because we say that to explain what we observe, it must be a wave. So have you ever wondered why this particle, this guy called light, can change form at one instant to a particle because particle, because like if you look at Einstein, normal or red, Einstein doesn't get normal or red for theory of uh, of uh, totality, you know, but for photoelectric effect. Einstein got normal or red for photoelectric effect, yeah. Bukan theory yang kita dah dengar selalu. When light hits onto a material, you get electron injected. So to explain that, you have to be a particle. How come light, eh, at one, one scene, it become particle, and one scene like diffraction, it become a wave. Have you ever wondered? This guy got dual personality, Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jacker. <laughs> this photon got dual personality, Mr. Hyde. You have you heard about the story, Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jacker? Dia macam ni lah. At one instant, it become me, macam ni And all of us has the traits of Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jacker. You must remember, all of us has that. The bad of us and the good of us. You must remember. And I always say to, to, to my student, it's a waste of time for you to work on the bad point of the person. You get nothing. I always believe to work on the best thing about the person. Because everybody got Mr. Hyde, Mr. Jacker. So I would like to work on Mr. Dr. Jacker. Yeah. So I look at the good things of people because you're not going to go anywhere by looking at the bad things of people. You cannot tap him, you cannot get anything from him because you have already judged him. I think the most important thing, there should not be judgment of people because we are not God to judge people. We never know people how good or how bad a person. We never know. We are not God. As long as we are not God, leave the judgment to God. We take the, the, we take the person as, as a person. So come back to the question, there are a lot of answer, unanswered questions about it. Fantastic about the particle, why it behaves such a way and then you find that people are talking about teleportation you can transfer things to one place to the next place to line there are so many questions like non-linear optics, non-linear phenomena banyak question of things left unanswered today and if you look at the last 20 and last 3 or 4 normal array if you look at normal array a lot of them are in the optics field the last was Nakamura in light emitting diode I'm sorry, in the blue laser diode. And many normal array from the last few rounds are mostly in the field of light. And light is a very important field, and light is going to change our life in the next 20 years. Believe me. Because we come from light, actually. Okay. Well, there's a... Uh, ayat terakhir, huh? we come from light. So, uh, Majlis dengan ini uh, mempersilakan Encik Muhammad Fairuz Asila untuk memberikan uh, cendera mata sebagai tanda kenangan kepada Profesor Ulong Datuk Dr. Mahathir Ahmad. Baiklah, rasanya majlis telah sampai ke penghujungnya dan sebelum mengakhiri majlis, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput para hadirin, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan semua untuk menikmati jamuan dan yang disediakan di lobi VIP Planetarium Negara.
negara Dan uh, sehingga kita bertemu lagi di lain kesempatan Sebelum jadi kami hulurkan Wabila hitafiq wal hidayah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Sekali ini tepukan kemuruh untuk Profesor Ulung Dr. Harith Ahmad Sorry for that Profesor Different level